interwebs, viewing devices, good folks. You are tuned into another episode of The Nonprofit. I am your neighborhood social worker, Cynthia McDonald. And this show is a product of the ACA, a 501c3 nonprofit organization dedicated to the separation of religion and government and promoting positive atheism. And here I am joined with some really good people. Some I heard really good things about them. Starting to my far, far left, Malti. Hello. How you doing? Fine, thanks. Great. I'm so glad that you have joined us to get this road on the show. And I think my first time, I'm here with Phoenix. How's it going? How you doing? Uh, doing all right. All righty, all righty, all righty then. Mm -hmm. And uh, our special, we have a special guest host, people. You ready? You ready? I believe to my immediate left, we have Jason. Wait, what? I, wait, C control room. You, you, you set up the wrong shot. C no, control it's, room. It's you. Yeah, it's, it's you, Jason. Hi. <laughs> so glad. Welcome to the show. Yes. <laughs> yes, welcome to the show. <laughs> oh my no goodness. No longer behind the scenes. No, no yeah, no, I'm, I'm used to being on the other side of uh the, the, the camera there. Yeah. <laughs> no, we uh decided uh there was lots that were drawn to bring you forward to have this particular <laughs> on-air conversation, okay? Oh, okay, and you know, and again, people, do not adjust your interwebs viewing devices. You are really tuned into the nonprofits and we are going to get right into it. We had a teaser last week on this particular topic and we are going to talk about it. And the links for this particular article is going to be in the show notes below. But this one is entitled, Nearly a Dozen States Want to Ban Critical Race Theory in Schools. And I'm just going to give this uh, uh, a little bit about this particular article. Matter of fact, I'm going to read from it a little bit. And this is from CBS News. So earlier this month, Idaho Governor Brad Little became the first Republican governor to sign into law a bill that restricts educators from teaching a concept called critical race theory. And more could follow. Nearly a dozen states have introduced similar Republican-backed bills that would direct what students can be can and cannot be taught about the role of slavery in American history and the ongoing effects of racism in the United States today. But critics say the legislation isn't aimed at what children are learning in the classroom. Idaho law prohibits educators from teaching individuals by virtue of sex, race, ethnicity, religion, color, and national origin are inherently responsible for actions committed in the past by others, members of the same sex, race, ethnicity, religion, color, or national origin. And one more portion of this particular article I wanted to read. A proposal in Rhode Island would prevent schools from teaching that Rhode Island or the United States is fundamentally racist or sexist. So, you know, I, I think that before we actually tackle and get into the you know nuts and bolts of this particular um, article, um, I wanted to uh, actually, let's see if we can actually go over an overview of critical race theory. So uh, Phoenix, uh, won't you help us out here so that we can understand this said thing? Yeah, so first thing before I actually get into the definition of critical race theory is that this is not something new. This has been around since the 70s, and it's, to the best of my knowledge, it's not actually being taught in schools. It's actually a, a course in law school. Mm -hmm. This is not grade school level <laughs> education stuff. This is a law school subject material. Mm -hmm. um, and so... Um, 
what, but it, what it actually is is it's the it's a viewpoint, a, a way of looking at uh, the law and other issues surrounding it. Uh, it, it examples uh, the um, social, cultural, and legal issues as they relate to race and racism. And that allows you to see racism as something some systemic and institutional rather than a collection of prejudice. Um, you can, uh, even though that uh, laws are written at, in a colorblind manner, so that, you know, there's no racism in the law itself, um, the way that the law is being applied uh, can be uh, racially discriminatory. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then it, it doesn't just stop there because then it also looks at other things such as uh, uh, other identities like gender, class, and all the ways that the things like that actually combine and interplay with each other to aggravate those same issues and play upon each other. So that that's what critical race theory is. It's a viewpoint of the interplay of all of that together. It is not um, the common misconception that it's um, uh, trying to promote racism and trying to make everybody hate themselves or hate this country or anything like that. No, it, it's, we are where we are in this country. We have the p history that we have. What is the situation currently and how can we move forward to improve? Mm -hmm. That's it. Right. You know, and that and this is what I normally see concerning like the blockage of trying to even introduce critical race theory in American school systems is that it seems like that you have a conglomerate of folks that just want to stay a historical and instead of like actually like tackling what, you know, the history is in this particular country. Malti, what you got on this? Well, I was really um, surprised me that Rhode Island had such a strong stance mm. until I found out that that is a port state. Mm -hmm. It is a state. Mm -hmm. So I started looking into um, Rhode Island and, and why someone might want to um, whitewash their history, uh, pun intended. And mm. um, I found a... Um, a Providence, um, Rhode Island, um, the, the mayor of Providence, Rhode Island, had wrote, written a report that, that um, I have linked um, in the show notes that talks about the five major acts of racism throughout history. And um, it is, uh, <laughs> it's not um, surprising, some of these things, but mm -hmm. um, and some of the numbers are. Um, so the five things, the great dying, which is saying that the, uh, from that 90% of the indigenous population when um, Europeans started coming over and started uh, populi um, populating the East Coast, 90% um, of the indigenous population was killed off by mm -hmm. disease. And then between 1709 and 1807, um, out of um, Rhode Island, Providence in particular, there was uh, over 900 sailings, um, 150,000 enslaved Africans came through those ports. Um, and then it was, there's, there was also then later on, there was a, the detribalization of, of the indigenous people, um, you know, got to take those savages and teach them Christianity. Of course. And then also the thing that, that it seems like is continuing on is this, um, this tradition of Jim Crow type um, ideas, not necessarily laws, but how, like you were saying, how those laws are being interpreted and um, interacting. So yeah, King uh, Jim Crow traditions um, is also what they were talking about. 
You know, um, thank you uh, for uh, this, our, our lovely uh, host in the background actually gave us a little tidbit that, uh, you know, last week when we were kind of like teasing that we're going to be talking about this, uh, Johnny mentioned the name of, of Rhode Island was originally uh, Providence Plantation, uh, but it was changed yeah. later on because of racial overtones. Um, and matter of fact, um, I actually watched, this is not in my notes, but I'm improvising folk, that I watched a documentary documentary on uh, a family called the DeWolfs. They were a major uh, a slave trading family that would actually go to, uh, to different parts of West Africa specifically, and they participated in the uh, transatlantic slave trade where they were um, trading things like rum and rifles and handkerchiefs for slaves. Mm -hmm. And then they would actually drop them off to Cuba and then come back to Rhode Island to then be auctioned off. And then they were sent to different uh, parts of the country. Matter of fact, I believe that their uh, particular family traded uh, slaves or was participatory in the slave trade for over three generations. Um, matter of fact, they actually, um, I had like a little tidbit that, um, and I think that you mentioned it, that like the uh, um, Africans were actually traffic, uh, trafficked uh, through uh, Rhode Island specifically between 1769 to 1820. Yes. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, I, I found that this really interesting and didn't like, you know, at one point uh, when we're talking about specifically um, critical race theory being like, uh, framed in a manner that it is like uh, inherently racist itself. I, I wanted to read a little bit from the Idaho um, law that just got signed by the um, by the governor, and I was I I I, I, I let's just say I okay. <laughs> so okay, so this is directly from the bill. Dignity and non-discrimination uh, in public education. It is the intent of the, of the legislation and administrators, faculty members, other employees, and students at public schools, including public charters, schools, and institutions of higher education, respect the dignity of, of others, acknowledge the right of others, to express differing opinions and foster and defend intellectual honesty, freedom of inquiry and instruction <clears throat> and freedom of speech and association. Okay, sounds pretty good so far, right? Sounds, that sounds pretty good, right? right? Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm not, yeah. yeah. I don't hear anything okay. that, that's More ringing like a, any, any bells right now. Sure, More sure, like okay. Equal let, Opportunity let's... Act, you know, it sounds like, okay, yeah, I can get behind some of this. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, so it sounds pretty cool. You know, not, not anything problematic, but let's read on. The, Ohio, the Idaho legislator, legislature finds that tenets outlined in subsection 3A of this section, often found in critical race theory, undermine the objectives outlined in subsection 1 of this section and exacerbate and inflame divisions on the basis of sex, race, ethnicity, religion, color, national origin, or other criteria in ways contrary to the unity of the nation and the well-being of the state of Idaho and its citizens. Is are we in are we over 2 minutes? Are we into over 2 minutes? Yeah, we're, we're I good. Think so. Okay. Yeah. Motherfucker. Okay, so Jason, <laughs> what you got on this? I feel like I was lucky in that I grew up in a more liberal area. And so when we went over U.S. history, it wasn't for the most part whitewashed. I mean, we still had the whole Columbus was great because of what he did. And mm. We wouldn't uh, find out until later on mm. that that's not true at all. Very much so. Not even close. Mm -hmm. We did talk about like the trail of tears we did talk about how you know we really just did terrible things to you know the native americans here and I, I the civil rights movement was touched on and we got to see the footage of you know people getting you know washed down the street with fire hoses 
So I didn't get as much of that whitewashing of history, a tiny bit of it. And, and I feel lucky because of that. And, and that's what this is all about. It's not about saying, hey, you know, America is just completely horrible because it, it takes a look at where we were where we are now and where we can go. And I think uh, that that's, you know, people want to rip on progressives and, and, you know, progressive isn't so much a destination, but it's a journey of, of getting better, of treating people with respect. Mm -hmm. And more people should be like that. You, you can still be conservative in how you do your thinking, but as long as if you're saying, hey, everybody should have these freedoms, you know, have that. And mm -hmm. like I said about, you know, you were talking about the Idaho law, you know, I think it was about, it, it reads like the equal opportunity act in the beginning, but then it just goes into the whole, let's pretend nothing happened. La la la. Sticking yes. our fingers in our ears and all yes, that. Exactly. That was, that was the yeah. part that was killing me. But now yeah. you've got the Texas, the Texas bill, which mm -hmm. bans all talk of privilege like you can't even mention it right right and they, they how privilege is that <laughs> right they texas well, well, is see. interesting uh, uh, uh I, I just wanted to throw this caveat in there so texas is really interesting because like you know the house passed a bill you know to teach like yes we're going to teach critical race theory right but you know once it got to the senate they, you know, they started to just to take out all the stuff that, you know, that they you can't teach in critical race theory. Mm -hmm. Like you can't mention Susan B. Anthony. You can't mention Dr. King. You can't use Frederick Douglass writings. Like all this particular stuff. I'm like, so what's the point? You of can't use history. history. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> well, no, you can use Dr. King, but you have to use a, you know, just like uh, that uh, uh, Patricia Morgan person did. Mm -hmm. You have to use it in order to prop your own, you know, standing up. And well, that's it's just kind, it's yeah. kind of like the uh, the go to phrase that everybody likes to quote of Dr. King. You know, we want to judge people by the content of their character and not the color of their skin. But, you uh, know, but if you really actually got a chance to uh, examine King's works, especially later towards his death, he was a lot more radical about, you know, policies that he wanted to actually have implemented, you know, uh, after the Civil Rights Act was signed in 1964. So, but nobody don't want to talk about that king. No no one wants to. And Malti, I think that you were, uh, you're about to say something. Oh, Phoenix actually oh. had something. Oh, Phoenix. Yeah, so, oh, okay, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> um, so one of the things I was noticing through all of the, all the stuff, I try looking into it all and, about 95% of what I find is is straw man bashing of uh, critical race theory. Mm -hmm. And but what I notice is that the running theme in it parallels the uh, the exact same thing with the, the purity culture and abstinence only teaching where they go, OK, we don't want people to, you know, with with that. We don't want the kids to have uh, have sex, you know, premarital sex. So let's not teach them about it at all, mm -hmm. so that they won't be tempted with it. So we don't want, and so now we don't want anybody to be racist. So let's not talk about racism at all. Don't let's not talk about segregation, racism, or anything like that at all, because then, then people. Won't, and as soon as you went and bring it up, you're going to make everybody racist. Oh my gosh! Just like it, it, it's the exact same principle, <laughs> and. <laughs> We actually see how well that work, works with uh, abstinence-only education, preventing pre uh, teenage pregnancies. Yeah. How about how about it doesn't work? How about that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Pretty much. It doesn't work at all. It no, actually it makes the, it, it exacerbates the problem. <laughs> it makes things worse. At with all the um, right-leaning judges that were installed in the uh, last four years, and um, was it the seventeen seventy-six commission that? Uh, um the oh, Pacino, oh, yeah. um, yeah. chief was was trying yeah. to you know, okay yeah yeah, so, yeah agent, the, the, agent no, orange. My, mm -hmm. my i'm wondering <laughs> i'm wondering if that uh, if they know that these laws will have some pushback in the le in if not the legislature then it's going to have to go to um the courts and with the installment of more right-leaning 
judges is this part of the that Christian blitz, um, you know, all of that kind of working in concert to uh, try to push towards this. Um, well, all these different things, you know, changing of the laws to be um, more supportive of um, of the bigoted. Um, well. Agent yeah. Orange, yes. So, so yeah, well, that, so I, I was going to actually say, Malti, to that point, that seems like those are the ones who are the most vocal about not uh, teaching critical race theory. You you guys are familiar with uh, Ken Ham and his, uh, oh, I think he has a virgin. What, what, what is their uh, <laughs> podcast called? Answers in Genesis? Uh, yep, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, oh, Answers yeah. in Genesis, or with uh, I love Paula Gia's spin on it, the Ham and Eggs yeah. News. <laughs> right, Ham and Eggs News. Let's go with that. So <laughs> they. <laughs> so like I remember, um, you know, one of our uh, one of uh, our uh, fellow YouTubers uh, streamer uh, asked me to take a look at one of their uh, podcasts because they were um, they were remarking on this letter called uh dear god help me hate white people yeah. but yeah but um the the letter itself was just basically this black woman's laments about you know all the different implicit biases uh microaggressions and just like you know overarching racism that she just ex you know experiences mm -hmm. as being a black person right and the first thing the very first thing that these people brought up and said this is an outcry again uh from the woke generation that wants to implement CRT critical race theory in schools. I was like, you you correlated all of that, this one letter to all of that. That like that's 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 yeah. <laughs> Basically they looked at the title and did not look in any further. <laughs> and, oh, well, no, well, they they read through it. They read through it, but well, basically be... completely they completely like you know um they completely like, you know, tore it apart because they were saying that she was not coming uh, from uh, the, um, what was it? They were, she was not coming from biblical principle and the love of mm. God. And how can she call herself a Christian and, and say that she espouses to these beliefs when she writes things like this, you know, like the yep. no true Scotsman type thing. I yes, it. Yep. Yep. Well, yeah. You're yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Now, um, back on the uh, 7076 uh, uh, commission there, that's mm -hmm. one of the things that really, really bugs me on that is it, it was done in response to critical race theory, and, but more specifically the uh, uh, 1619 project, which right. teaches people black history, basically. Mm -hmm. um, but I, what I really love about that is the response of people that actually know what they're talking about. So um, there was not a single person with a background in U.S. history on that commission. <laughs> and this is what James Grossman, the uh, executive director of the American Historical Histo Association, had to say about it. Mm -hmm. Just one sentence here. This report skillfully weaves together myths, distortions, deliberate silences, and both blatant and subtle misreading of evidence to create a narrative and an argument that few respectable professional historians, even across a wide interpretive spectrum, would consider plausible, never mind convincing. <laughs> so like, yeah, the, probably the, the person with the most credibility on US history, <laughs> royally bashing. <laughs> the report. <laughs> okay. uh, I, I love I uh, love when non experts like assert themselves as experts. But uh, Jason, you actually have something in your notes uh, from a Brian's uh, seats. Is that correct? Seats, sites, something like that. Yeah, he had this this quote, and I mean, uh, there's a lot to unpack in this quote. Mm. Uh, he said, you know, about the 1619 project that it is revisionist history seeking to determine our national origins to be based on a negative act such as slavery. Therefore, everything that follows, including the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, capitalism, our healthcare system, road systems, even the foods that we eat are fatally flawed and inherently racist, which, I mean, this is... 
like a slippery slope argument yeah. first off it, I mean, which it, it's, it's a, ridiculous it's a genetic fallacy it, uh, yeah he's he's employing a genetic fallacy to generate that slippery slope yes i mean mm. the constitution actually did start out racist right very much so and by design because you've had the three-fifths compromise you know where we count mm -hmm. all the Three people and three fifths of the other people, you know, and, and it was de deliberately phrased like that so that we were like, oh yeah, the people who were owned slaves. So yes, the constitution. Yeah, uh, one of the arguments that, uh, th that even that is being twisted today because I just heard. Um, some I, in all the uh, videos and whatnot that I went through, I've, I've lost track of where this one came from. Mm. But I, one of the people went and complained that that was what um, uh, balanced the field to abolish slavery. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> to, to abolish the, uh, it's like, no. The, that's, you, exactly, hey, that, that's exactly what it was, what yeah. it was not. When, when, when we're going, you know, the, the, the road system, I, I don't know, because that was based upon Germany's uh, Autobahn. But food? Food is somehow inherently racist? Like, you know, what? We have to be exposed to something more spicy than mayonnaise? Get out yes. of here. Yes, Jason. Uh, uh, food is uh, racist. Uh, therefore, I am going to not eat any more greens. Anywho... <laughs> You know, I um this take actually, away my paprika. Yeah. <laughs> no paprika. Um, you know, we could actually this could be really a, a whole show, you know, but oh, yeah. um but I, I did kind of just uh just wanted to just to wrap this particular uh segment real quick. And I, I wanted to just uh read this tweet uh specifically from uh, uh representative Rosendale. Um where he uh, and this actually came on the heels of um, uh, Juneteenth being made a federal holiday, and he said, "Let's call an ace an ace. This is an effort by the left to create a day out of, uh, um, I'm sorry, a day out of whole cloth to celebrate identity politics as part of its larger efforts to make critical race theory the reigning ideology of our country. Since I believe in treating everyone equally, regardless of race, and that we should be focused on what unites us rather than our differences, I will vote no. So, you know, let's just, we can just wrap this up until we move on. Malti, can you give your final thoughts on this lovely topic? Uh, um, you're muted, uh, Malti. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Sorry about that. Um, so, um, you know, I just the difference, you know, the proponents of critical race theory say it's, it's teaching us how race is integrated into our history. Um, but how do you do that when, as like in Texas, um, you ban any discussion on privilege or white supremacy? Mm -hmm. um, it's an educational tool um, like the 1619 Project. And um, these tools that are up front and are um, open about our, um, the negative parts of our history are definitely problematic mm. for bigots um, because it, oh, yeah. it shows their bigotry um, in the light of day. That's right. Yeah, it, it definitely, um, when they are trying to paint a certain perspective of the past that is not actually reflective of actual history, mm -hmm. when you start actually teaching the actual history, it undermines everything that they're trying to achieve with the narrative they're pushing. So they, in order to keep things going, they have to bash it as much as possible. <laughs> but <laughs> this is this is reality. This is true. I mean, people have... Yeah. It, 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 it's sad that things are the way it, it is right now. Yeah. With, yeah. Um, Jason, what you got? I mean, it's cliche, but 
those who refuse to study history are doomed to repeat it. And yeah, we are seeing a, a massive whitewashing. We're seeing people who, you know, just see the stars and stripes and be like, nope, that is that is our history. Our, our history is Washington chopping down the cherry tree. It's Paul Bunyan somehow. It's, you know, sure. it, it's it's the mythicism. And we do know that, you know, conservatives tend to love that mysticism. You know, if we can just say, no, look, we're not trying to say you're terrible. You're not. You're American history. Black people are American history. Chinese people, you know, are American history. We interned Japanese people, took them out of their homes so that is american history yeah. but also all the great things that we've accomplished you know through the diversity that we have so you know, it's not focusing on just the bad yes the bad is in there because we don't want to repeat that again indeed and you know and and this my this thoughts on it before we just move on is that you know we we have to get to the point where we are not afraid to deal with our past as a country. Um, we can never expect like uh, Representative Rosenthal wants to, Rosendale rather, uh, said that, you know, CRT teaches young minds to see the world as divided into two categories, oppressors and their victims, weakening public and private bonds that create trust and allow civic engagement. We do want to have civic engagement, but it does start with telling the truth and mm -hmm. and and this is exactly what you know crt does this is what critical race theory does it attempts to really get at the truth of what we are what we have done and um when it comes to this country <sighs> okay everybody take a breath <laughs> <laughs> <Tiny> <laughs> <laughs> that's, exactly. it's a heavy one it, it definitely is a heavy one that 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 is a heavy one and i just want to uh just give a, like a little a little uh something something to the audience but if you haven't done so already please subscribe to this channel and click the like button not the like button but the like <laughs> button <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what a bucket is, but <laughs> we'll click the like button instead below and set the notification bell to on. So you are always notified when a new episode premieres every Sunday at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. Now, we are now over 8000 subscribers. It, like we're even further than that. So, yeah. <laughs> hey, now. So once we actually hit the 10,000 subscriber mark, we can start doing fundraisers. So if you haven't subscribed yet, you can help us get there by doing so now, like right now, like don't wait, do that now and share the link to our channel with your friends, your family members, your coworkers, that neighbor dude that you really don't like. I got a few and they know who they are and everyone else. Let's get the word out there so we can help. Well, we can start helping those fundraisers, right? Right, right, right. I know, right. I know. You all was supposed to chime in, right? Yes, absolutely. Oh, right. Yeah, Thank you. All right. <laughs> now the ACA has a new YouTube channel. <laughs> Check out the Atheist Experience Network, a one-stop shop for all ACA shows in podcast form in one channel. Subscribe at tiny.cc slash a E N podcast to listen to episodes of the nonprofits like us, the atheist experience, truth wanted, and all of the other ACA shows. So you don't miss a single episode, not one and join our fan social media outlets. You can find most of the nonprofit hosts and the eighth in the atheist community of discord on the atheist community of discord reading works for me by going to tiny.cc slash ACA discord and on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash nonprofits live. And if you would like to support the show, 
You can do so by becoming a NP or a nonprofit patron at patron.com or patreon.com slash the nonprofits. Support the ACA by shopping at smile.amazon.com and selecting the Atheist Community of Austin as a beneficiary. If you can find yourself already shopping at Amazon, be sure to use that link to help us out at the ACA. We sure do appreciate it. And we value your feedback, people. Tell us what you like, what you don't like in the comments, or email us at nonprofits at atheist-community.org. And as with all of our shows, links to today's topics and the news we discuss are available in the description below. Feel free to pause this video, read the materials for yourself, don't have to take our word for it. Critical thinking, people, critical thinking. But make sure you come back to hear our discussion. All right? All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, why don't we go ahead and get into topic two? And I believe that, uh, Malti, you're going to mm -hmm. go ahead and pick us out from this. Yeah. We're, um, so, um... It's been a, a, a an interesting um, month uh, in that this is was the Southern Baptist Convention where they uh, go over and all of the representatives from the different uh, regions, the different churches vote on the president for the next two years and um, mm -hmm. the members of the board. Um, so um, I know we all know what the Southern Baptist um, Church is, but um, you know it's it's important to keep in mind that um, how much of a uh, political force they have become. Yes, they. You know, have. I mean, back in the 1960s, 1970s, there was about eight million of them. Mm -hmm. um, it, it topped out at 16. I think that was in 2006. And it's been declining since then. Um, we're down to to 14 million now. Mm. But I mean, it's still um, people like Jerry Faldwell, Junior and Senior, mm -hmm. the Grams, um, Huckabee. These are all people that have been really pushing for changes in um, the what Protestant um, Christianity is and yeah. what. Uh, what, how they are in, um, interacting with uh, the political um, parts of our country, but like, not for the good. Um, but there is a, some good news, I think, in mm -hmm. this um, convention, in that um, the person that they did hire as, or vote in for <laughs> their um, president is, uh, is not the Trump-loving um, extreme right winger. Um, mm -hmm. he, he's he's a conservative to be sure, but um, he's not um, the the one that um, some of the the real mango wearing hat people would have wanted in. Um, there's been also a couple different um, losses, um, so they have lost. Um, two very prominent people, um, Russell Moore and um, Beth Moore. These are two different people, not related. Yeah. Um, I was waiting so, for you to say that. No relation. No Continue. relation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Beth, Beth Moore, um, yeah, she was really couldn't handle the complementarianism. Um, right. we, we talked about her in an earlier ep episode. And so yeah. she uh, is no longer associated with the um, the Baptist, uh, Southern Baptist Convention. Mm -hmm. And then Russell Moore, oh my goodness. Um, his was a little bit stronger. Um, Russell Moore was very high up in the um, the inner workings of the church. Uh, I believe he was the uh, the head of, let me find the cor his correct name here. Um, he was the president of the Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission mm. um, and wrote a, a letter about what he was seeing that this commission was doing. Um, he wrote that um, in May. And then um, here early this month, he uh, complete, he disassociated himself with 
the Southern Baptists and um, has now taken a position on a, a, a non um, what, what's the, what's the kind of church that isn't associated with a non-denominational mm-hmm. congregation. So he's mm-hmm. yeah, completely going on. Um, some of the quotes from this letter um, are just heartbreaking. If I may, um, please. Yeah. He's talking about um, the sexual abuse that he had been seeing and how the the church ethics committee was um, handling it. Wow. Quote, um, the pressing issue here is that first and foremost of sexual abuse, the executive committee through their bylaws, work groups have exonerated churches in a spur of the moment meeting from serious charges of sexual abuse cover up. Mm. Um, this is, he's specifically talking about Jennifer, um, Lyell. Um, I'm sorry if I've mispronounced her name. Um, she's, um, she has given, um, everyone the, uh, the okay to use her name. And when she's talking about what ha- happened, um, she was, um, at some point in time, the former vice, there was, was the vice president of the, um, Lifeway Christian Resource Center. Um, mm. that's one of the sections of the Southern Baptist Church. She was one of the highest paid female employees of the church. Mm -hmm. Um, And she told the committee that um, she had been sexually assaulted by a um, professor at the university that she was attending. This was a, a university owned by the Southern Baptist Convention. They changed her wording of, of her complaint to that she had been in a um, inappropriate relationship, uh, morally inappropriate relationship with her former professor. So instead oh, wow. of being a victim, it makes her uh, culpable. You're right. Yes. She's the, yeah. the culpable party uh, uh-huh. participant. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So that, so as he says, um, it just continues to go on. Yep. I, um, just like the adulterous um, woman in the Bible. <laughs> mm-hmm. They don't bring so, up the guy. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, I mean, that that's that's one of the things that that really has, um, I think, is is the thing that is is um, breaking the Southern Baptist Convention apart mm-hmm. is the complementarianism. And because of that, um, this inability for them to um, properly look at um, the problems that they're having um, as people are coming forward and saying, hey, this this stuff is going on. And well, and, and just like the Catholic Church, that the um, people that are there to administrate when shit goes wrong mm-hmm. are not doing it in a proper manner. They're covering things up and they're blaming the victim. You you know that that's so that's so on point, especially like when you when you bring up these uh, issues um, when it comes to church business dealing with what is obviously criminal. You know, like um, the pe- the pedophilia that's rampant, like in the in the um, in the church, uh, specifically in the Catholic Church. And 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 and, oh, and, yeah. and to be honest, like as as I've gone on and as we've you know talked in previous episodes, it's not just the Catholic Church, right? Um, oh no, it, no. And I mean, like it's it's like you know it, it's sexual assault specifically. It, it, it in, instead of like taking ownership and saying, you know what, we need to pass to make sure that the person who is perpetrating, per, per, yeah, yeah, perpetuating, perpetuating said acts is uh, punished to the letter of the law. But instead, they just want to do victim blaming and then, you know, sweep it under the rug. And, and, and I even know that, like, I think that even like last week, I, I forgot specifically, well, we were talking about this, like, you know, with the, with the Catholic yeah. Church last week in uh, Latin America about, you know, the decline of membership there and how you are seeing like more atheists um, coming about. And, and a lot of it has to do with the, the character of the church is severely blemished. Mm-hmm. Right. And um, and, and the reason and this is why you're seeing like, you know, people are leaving in droves. And and I'm, I'm I that's kind of what I got, you know, from um, from this article when I was reading it, too. Um, 
uh, Jason, I know that you had like a few thoughts on this on this particular article as well. Yeah, I did. And I wanted to key on something that Phoenix said mm -hmm. uh, about, you know, how the, the, the women are being portrayed in, in a certain light. And, and that's actually a biblical story. Mm -hmm. the, the Potiphar's wife, I think that's how it's pronounced. I'm not 100 percent sure. We'll go. We'll go with that. Yeah. It, 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 basically, you know, how these women are seeking out these men, you know, that, that, you know, okay, of course they're, they're whores and all that, but it, it's actual, you know, biblical term that they're using, you know, you know, to the biblical analogies. But one thing that, you know, okay. So, you know, the SBC is losing membership and you know we've, we've kind of talked something about that in other shows about how the church in general is, is losing members sometimes it's to you know become more secular sometimes it's because they don't like their church and i i, I see this as kind of like a kind of a splintering like the SBC is about to be splintered. You're getting the more conservative elements and you're going to then also get more of the liberal elements and they may splinter to, you know, where the SBC isn't. I mean, the SBC even tried to remove the Southern from their name in order to, you know, kind oh. of shift away from some of the racist and, and sexual rhetoric of, of the past. And, yeah. you know, we've seen yeah. how well that's been working for them so far. Well, yeah. Speaking of the racism, um, the yeah, other thing that, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> that, uh, that Mr. Moore um, had uh, definitely said in this letter, I um, have a link to the, uh, the actual letter that he sent to the SBC um, commission really good in reading. the notes mm -hmm. is that, um, that he is, he was being trying to put forth um reasons why we need to have they need to have racial reconciliation mm -hmm. um they do not have a large standing of um of black um people in the higher up um of the church yeah. and they've actually um when some of the uh, church leaders were um repeating some of the things that um the one that the cheetah that would be king um, was saying, they some of the the black um, church leaders were leaving the right. congregation. Yeah, the um, the the, yeah. Um, the article actually uh, said that there last year there was a damaging mini exodus of black pastors from the SBC when some of the seminary presidents insisted on issuing a statement. Um, I believe uh, aping MAGA hat attacks mm -hmm. on critical race theory, uh, hint, hint from last segment, even <laughs> considerations of self-preservation haven't e uh, trumped Trumpism specifically as priorities for church-based culture warriors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Moore said, uh, and I quote, one SBC leader who was at the forefront the, of these behind the closed doors attacks on me have already ripped me to shreds verbally for saying in 2011 mm. that a Southern Baptist convention should elect an African-American president. Wow. This same leader told the gathering that the conservative resurgence is like the civil war, except this time, unlike the last one, the right side won. Uh, so. Yeah. Wow. You, you know. That's not right, like correct. That's the, you, the right. That's exactly yeah. I walked out of that <laughs> gathering as did one of you, unquote. Mm. Wow. Uh, so yeah, he's he's been trying to work on it, but I don't know that he's he's getting much um, help. Now, one of the growing trends that we keep on seeing all the time is that it is the phrase it's not a religion, it's a relationship. And this is exactly why they they, they view okay there's not an issue with the belief system or the, the methodology of how we come to the beliefs. No, it's just that this institution has gone bad and it, that, and so we don't trust the institution, but how are they coming to these conclusions in the first place? 
it, it's not the the institution just conglomerates the, uh, all those mistakes together into a single uh, social uh, uh, community. It, it, uh -huh. it doesn't really address the issues. Mm -hmm. And what are they doing as soon as they decide, oh, this particular religion, this institution, now that I've seen that this has gone bad, what do they do? They jump ship and go to another one. Now, most of, most of these people are going um, uh, that are jumping ship from the Southern Baptists are going to the evangelicals, right? So right. Yeah. and bringing <laughs> the same and then bringing the same values that the previous mm. uh, organization holds into this particular one, and then you just yeah. condense that hate. Mm. And, well, and it has its own issues that just because the evangelicals haven't been around as long, mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, in prominence. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the, it hasn't had it as much time to manifest, but since the evangelicals seem to be working on an accelerated pace, I, th I think it won't take that much longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and we might see more of these like little micro churches, like you know, you've got the mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. Westboro Baptist Church. You know, right. they they are you know super traditionalists and and what have you, and you know, it was primarily just the Phelps family. And yeah, it's it's all about hate. And and one of the things that you know we see is people don't necessarily pick a church that is you know necessarily close to them. Uh, they they don't you know have the their the beliefs of the church are kind of secondary. They choose the church that aligns with their beliefs they create their own mm -hmm. little echo chamber yep. mm -hmm. and if that does mm -hmm. splinter away you know kind of like what we're seeing then yeah we might see more westboro baptist churches and you know what happens when those churches then get the ball rolling like okay look you can practice your hate here because we love you <laughs> yeah, yeah, you you just you just touched on a key issue that uh, that has always bugged me, and that's the um, um, basically the church window shopping. Uh, you know, you have you have the way that you see things, and whenever you move to a new area, you look for a new church. Okay, I'm going to go to this church. Oh, they said something I don't like, so I'm not going to go to this church. Oh, they said something else I don't like. This church, you know, you keep going until you find a church that actually, um, uh, you know fits what their interpretation is. There's no cohesive interpretation of the, of the text of the belief system. Just People just go to where people agree with them. Mm -hmm. they, echo they chamber. Yep. Yep, create your own echo chamber. Well, right, um, well, Malti, before we move on, why don't you go ahead and wrap us up on this little you dig. Yeah. Um... Don't have much more to say. Um, I, I'm happy that the ultra conservative pastors like um, Mike Stone um, did not get the presidency. Um, however, I don't know that uh, Lindell, um, the, the guy that uh, did co has come in, is um, going to be able to really do much these next two years um, to try to stop the he hemorrhaging of mm -hmm. the uh, their the number of people in, their, in the pews uh, and the number of new people coming in is um, just not there. So mm -hmm. not only are they, are they losing their, um, their core substituents, their, uh, the new people, the new kids um, are not coming in. So keep it up, guys, except <laughs> without the rape. <laughs> Indeed. I, that should go without saying. <laughs> <laughs> really should. Um, and I would just say to all of uh, all the other ones who were falling away, just become atheists. This is so much easier. Okay. Well, moving on. We literally have t-shirts. <laughs> we, we, I got a few. I got a, I got a few. I got a few. Uh. Oh my goodness. Well, let's go ahead and get into this next bad boy. And it's stuff that I would like to say. Shit! Internet <laughs> apologists say. Shit! Internet apologists say. All right. So, I, 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 you know what? To be honest with you, I forgot who's lead. Oh, Phoenix! Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're taking this one. Help us out here. Okay, so... <laughs> You may may not have, know the name, but I'm sure you've heard of um, 
heard of some of the uh, arguments being portrayed because they've gone completely viral. Uh, Dr. Sherry Tintinny. Um, mm -hmm. You may know her as the uh, lady who went and presented, look, uh, the vaccines are making people magnetic. See, I can stick a quarter or I can key onto my neck or my forehead or whatever. You know, it, it's this lady, that lady. Mm -hmm. um, she's actually one of 12 people responsible for 65% uh, of the vaccine disinformation on uh, uh, social media. Mm -hmm. Currently, uh, she's going around trying to get the, um, um, the Ohio House to vote on a bill uh, to that would allow um, uh, prevent businesses from requiring employees to be vaccinated. So ex exercising the rights of capitalism and free expression going, okay, this is our business. This is the way we want to run it. Uh, no, people can now, uh, if this passes, then you go, I don't want it because of medical conditions. Well, that one fits, but the, uh, 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 religious reasons and natural immunity, as in you've already received, you've already had COVID before, right. as reasons to not be vaccinated. And what she's doing to persuade them is using uh, her belief systems. Okay, you're Christians. What will God? What will you say when you are judged by God in the afterlife? Uh, what will you tell him uh, when uh, you've coerced people to be injected with this gene modification technology that irreversibly disrupts your chromosomes? What will you say to God on Judgment Day? And it's, you know, it's like, yeah. Yeah, she said that. She said that. She totally said that. Good. Uh, and then it is, um, I mean, yeah. But the, the, the things that really bug me. Um, is what does she go on about? That, you know that 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 it's damaging to you because it modifies your. So, no, the the mRNA vaccines don't enter in the nucleus. Your DNA is in the nucleus. The vaccine doesn't go into the nucleus. You're good. It doesn't actually modify. It doesn't even go to the same spot where your DNA is located. You're fine. <laughs> You know, <laughs> yeah, there's there's nothing in it that can make you uh, that can magnetize you either. <laughs> no, there's you no know, metals in it, and even if there were metals in it, it'd be too little. Yeah, you know, and uh, I, I'm glad you ahead. mentioned the whole magnet magnetism because I do have a little bit of a demonstration. So I have here <laughs> this driver, and and this little bit here, it's a magnet. So like, I have a spoon here. It's magnetized. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. So, so somebody putting a spoon—that might be good proof, right? Uh, here is. Oh, well, stick it on your nose like the kids do. Here's a quarter. <laughs> here's a quarter. It's it's not attracted to the magnet and it falls. You know, uh, uh, a keychain. Look, keychain. Okay, yes, that's magnetic. Does. But oops, and the bit falls out, of course. Of course. But the key itself, yeah, mm. not magnetic, not magnetic. A, a subspace yep. communicator, <laughs> not magnetic. <laughs> so <laughs> when you see a quarter being attached to to somebody's uh, arm, and and here, here, I look. Hold on, can I get on screen? Look, look, it fell right off. Mm. Fell right off. Because there's no magnetic yep. component to the vaccine. And, and you've been vaccinated, correct? I have been vaccinated. <laughs> so, I, I'm fully vaccinated, been uh, vaccinated for a little over a month so now. And, and by her yeah. argument, you by by yeah, you should be magnetized at this point. So I mean, I would love to have Magneto's powers, but unfortunately, it doesn't give you that. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. No, you you know, as a healthcare professional shit like this infuriates me, you know, and Oh, I can imagine. I, I, I literally have, you know, spent the past what this is June, right? Uh, yep. I spent yeah. the past three months, a March. Yeah. March, uh, April, May, and then part of June, uh, on, uh, vaccination events to try to get as many people vaccinated. And 
I, I know that like I've had some of these conversations with people when it comes to what does the vaccine do to you and what it does not do to you. And and I remember when the first um, uh, when Moderna and and Pfizer was uh, was ratified by the uh, FDA for emergency use, child, you heard all types of conspiracy theories coming out uh, concerning about what they do. Um, I remember reading an article about uh, it. Uh, some people thought that um, it was uh, it, the the magnetism in said. Uh, the, um, vaccine was going to, you know, um, all of a sudden, you know, I, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, like give you vibes for 5G and, and, yep. uh, and then uh, they'll go back to 5G giving you cancer and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, there's all types of craziness. You know, I, I, I saw something also like correlated to like, uh, like the um the pedals that like people will put on their uh guitars what have you just to make it you know yes oh. yeah my, 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 my 5g signal well, i was going to show mm -hmm. you whatever my 5g G signal has not improved since getting it so no no it, it hasn't but i you know but i i just wanted to like just go over like it's a few things like in the article that um you know, as far as like what's been been debunked about this woman's claims, because oh, like, you know, yeah. she's making because like she's making, you know, arguments from authority because she's a doctor. Right. And mm -hmm. but she there is no substantiated evidence for the claims that she's making. Like, OK, so one of them is people are being magnetized and her evidence are images from the Internet. OK, because if, if it's on the Internet, it obviously is real. Right. But mm -hmm. Reuters. Reuters actually debunked the claim. Uh, there's a metallic ingredient in the COVID-19 shots approved for the United States medical professionals said, even if they did, it wouldn't be enough to attract a magnet as you demonstrated, as you demonstrated, mm -hmm. Jason. Now, she also claims that uh, the COVID-19 vaccines will alter a person's genetic makeup. That's been debunked. Uh, from the article, it says that the belief has been debunked by scientists and the CDC who point out that the, MR, the mRNA vaccine, such as the one from Pfizer and Moderna, never enters the nucleus of the cell, as you just said, uh, Phoenix, um, where a person's DNA is kept, and therefore it does not interact with or affect a person's DNA. And the last ditch effort that this woman makes is, to, uh, is an appeal to emotion uh, like as we, as you mentioned previously, and I just want to reiterate that point for those of you, I, uh, I, I like to do this in my best preacher voice. If you all would give me lead way. Sure. Thank you. <clears throat> Turn into your, the word. No, I'm just kidding. For those of you that say that you are a Christian, what will your life review look like at the end of your life? Timpani asked the committee. Will the Lord say to you something like you coerce people to be injected with this gene modification technology that irreversibly disrupts your chromosomes? I would really like somebody to call in, specifically her, to <laughs> one of our ACA shows and really have this conversation on air. I, I really would would like that. You know, Malti, what you got? <laughs> Well, um, she's she's a doctor. She has a medical degree, and in osteopathic medicine, which she's not, which she's not using right now. Mm. I, I believe currently, her and her husband have a um, a seminar that they put on. You can buy tickets for a absorbent amount of money to to learn how to um, tell people about the the pitfalls and problems with vaccination. Uh, this, she is not just a um, mRNA mm -hmm. vaccine um, denier. She doesn't like any vaccines. Mm, yeah. I don't understand how this woman is yeah. allowed we to cause so, I mean, actually, that's public health, about. right? Isn't, isn't there something about Thou shalt do no harm. Misinforming people is causing harm. Yeah, it uh, really is. Yeah, it really, it, it, and, and that there is a, this bill, Bill 
248 in the Ohio, um, Ohio State um, Legislature, it um, COVID's not going to be gone anytime soon, even though, you know, you and I are all vaccinated, even though my county is like one of the highest percentages of um, getting vaccinated. Um, yeah. Ohio, we'll off I, I, I'm scared for you. Yeah, yeah the, they're at 40% uh, of their population is refusing vaccination. In so the they'll state never, they won't reach herd immunity. Yeah, right. they, they, they can't. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. It makes that's, me mad. It makes us all mad, man. It just and, 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 and it should and it should. Go, go ahead, Jason. What were we gonna say? Yeah, I mean, she goes on about the numbers, the less than one percent, which I've heard a lot of, not just anti-vaxxers, but specifically anti-COVID vax talk about. You know, they talk about less than point zero zero two percent chance of actually dying from this, and. You know, there's a lot of things that we heavily legislate that have less than 1% deaths globally. You know, uh, traffic deaths, uh, industrial accidents, you know, and yet we keep, you know, DUI checkpoints. We keep uh, seatbelts in cars, airbags. We're putting more and more systems for, you know, making sure that the driver can see and stop and you know control their their vehicle safely you know so why is it it's okay to do that but you can't you know oh no no we're not gonna uh, you know have people do this vaccine because it less than a 0.002 percent no no don't make it a, a numbers game because that is still an incredibly high number. We That's have right. lost over 600,000 people That's right. to this one thing. Right. Please don't kill grandma. I, I, yeah, that, I, I need you all yeah. not to do that. Now, so and, one, of, uh, one of the things that's always bugging uh, me are, mm -hmm. the, are the numbers that are always presented with this percentage of deaths. It's like they keep going less than 1%. Um, well, the thing is, is that a percentage point is a huge deal when you're talking about the actual numbers of the population. Mm -hmm. But what bothers me is I went and crunched the numbers myself. I looked up how many cases that we uh, that are reported versus how many deaths. And it's higher than that. It's uh, 2.16 is the death rate when I calculated it out with um, the numbers from Monday evening. But and it's 1.8 according to John Hopkins here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. You know, when I looked at the looked at the numbers and did the same thing to refute arguments from a coworker back early this year, um, actually you no know, mid last year, uh, they they were over four percent. You know, so the percentage is going down because we're handling it so much better. But keep in mind these numbers, you know are at the point where where the whole entire globe is taking measures against it. Mm -hmm. If we weren't taking those measures, you can only imagine how bad it would actually be. Well, right. you can look. You, you, can, yeah. you can look around the world and you can see where there has not been the ability to get proper hospitalization and right. vaccination. Right. And that's why we have the Delta variant out there mm -hmm. right now and that's that's why places yep. like venezuela and brazil um, are hey. having max exodus hey. of people hey, thank you right. for mentioning the variants that reminds me one of the key things that she argues against is that it, that this bill argues for mm -hmm. is that you don't need to take the, the vaccine if you're um if you've received if you've actually contracted COVID. right right now, the, the, here, here's the here's a big difference between uh, your resistance to uh, the vac to COVID from the vaccine versus natural uh, resistance. The time span that you actually have resistance is much longer with the vaccine by several months at least. Mm -hmm. And secondly, and most importantly, is that the vaccine works against the variants. 
the net, the resistance you gain from uh, catching COVID and getting over it does not protect you against the variants at all. Right. We have no idea of the amount of protection you might get or how long it might last. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can't, you can't say that you, that, you know, I got it once. I won't get it again. Yeah, no, that's yeah. not, that's not the case. Yeah. That's, and that's exactly. And exactly. Just like, you know, like the flu shot, you get that mm -hmm. every year and more than likely, cause I don't see, and, and I'm, and, mm -hmm. and as much as like, you know, uh, trainings and other, like, you know, um, uh, literature that I have read uh, concerning COVID is that you know this this particular virus and its variants are not going to go any go away anytime soon. More than likely, we're going to have to have boosters in order to continuously keep us yeah. protected as much as possible. And I and I just wanted to say before we close this out is that you know um, we have um, data concerning the uh, the efficacy of these particular uh, vaccines and um, and the protection that it can offer people from less likely attract uh, getting or being infected with COVID-19 uh, and also it's very and even though like yes reactions are are a thing but there have been uh, more people that contracted COVID and died from it than those who actually experienced any type of reactions, adverse reactions from the vaccine. So point blank period, don't listen to this woman, get your vaccine, but please talk oh, to your yeah. doctor first. Yeah, <laughs> and, these and these vaccines are monumentally more effective than prior vaccines we have for other diseases. Uh, you're, for most other vaccines we've had before this, mm -hmm. you're lucky if it has a 50 percent uh, success rate uh, facts facts that's a <laughs> that's a big fucking fact and it's been more and than these, say that. the the <laughs> mrna uh, vaccines uh it while they vary from uh version to version mm -hmm. all the mrna ones so far that i'm aware of are all over 90 percent effective that is correct and then the ones like uh, johnson and johnson and astrazeneca they're over 70 percent effective that is so correct. this this is still monumentally more effective than any other vaccine we, are, right. we typically see with anything else. That is so. correct. And we're not even going to talk about the smallpox vaccine that came mm -hmm. out years and years ago, had a 10% kill rate, and you was made to take it anyway. Oh, that one. Oh, oh <laughs> thank you for bringing up the smallpox, because mm -hmm. here's, the, here's the other thing. If this bill passes and people are allowed to vol uh, voluntarily withdraw from uh, 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 being mandatory vaccinations, who's to say that they suddenly can't do that with other vaccinations that are required? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That ha They've been okay with having vaccinations mandatory for, in, in which case, what diseases that we thought we've eradicated may come back if they allow that trend to continue? Th that part right there and that and that is also big fucking facts and speaking of big fucking facts let's go to this last bad boy the strange but true strange but true Oh, I love I the Northern Lights. I, I I totally know the Northern Lights. Uh Jason, won't you go ahead and uh get uh get us into this particular one? Yeah, so this article, it's just a funny little story and, and definitely something that, you know, it, it's going to be fun to end on. But before we do so, you know, this is something to do with boats and I am former Navy. So let me let me let me go ahead and put on my my Navy hat here. All right. You know, oh, wait, not supposed to uh, salute when covered. Um, you know, what? I'm uh, out. It doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so this article comes from Fox News. Oh, no, no. Well, wait, 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 here's, the thing, here's the thing. Wait a minute, Jason. Wait a minute. This means that even though that we are an atheist, uh, secular humanist leading leaning podcast, video cast, whatever we call it today. Ooh, we're not we're not biased that we don't pick articles from a plethora of sources. Yes, we're willing to be fair and balanced. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take that, 
theist apologist. So, this uh, this article comes out of Ipswich in uh, the UK, and it is about a museum that is shaped in, I'll say, arc-like proportions, although not in the actual scale. It's not like the Ark Encounter down there in Kentucky, mm. uh, who have also had their own water problems. <laughs> this one's a little bit different, though, in that it's not flooding, surprisingly, for a 60-year-old barge, as it were. <laughs> it can't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately, the original article does not really convey. It says, you know, there were some deficiencies, but the Ipswich Star, which is also going to be linked in the notes, uh, does actually go into some of the things that is wrong with it. And the, the biggest things that it has wrong is there are no life-preserving features. Uh, they don't have any real flotations devices around it that are easily accessible because, well, that wasn't period correct. There is no fire prevention on board, so no sprinklers, which you definitely want on a big wooden 60-year-old floating barge. And so we're trying to be polit uh, biblically accurate, Jason. What do you mean? Well, if they were being <laughs> biblically uh, accurate, they should have made the correct size, which would have had yeah. massive problems. True, true. Yeah. <laughs> literally speaking. <laughs> yeah, this was supposed to be 230 uh, feet long, if right. I'm correct, which is mm -hmm. it, it supposedly about half the size of the dimensions yeah. dictated in the Bible. <laughs> right, right. And the last deficiency that I could find from that article was that it was missing a load level on the outside of the boat. That's mm -hmm. where... If you're looking at you know ships and you see those numbers on the side of the hull and all that, that's what that is. Mm -hmm. So the UK government said, well, because you don't have any of those things, your ark is not seaworthy. <gasps> and, you know, and, and it's so hilarious. And you know, so they've been sitting there for how long? They, they, this 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 came into port into Ipswich port. Um, how long ago? How um, long have they been stuck? Nineteen there? months, if I'm not mistaken. Nineteen months. Mm -hmm. They've been racking up docking fees That's and fines, seven hundred dollars a day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so far, totaling seventeen thousand dollars. <laughs> Okay, so so this um this this piece of floating history um whose whose flag is it flying under? So it's flying under a Dutch flag, at least it's supposedly flying under it. But because th this barge, and I keep calling it a barge because that's exactly what it is. It has no power itself. It has mm -hmm. to be towed around, mm -hmm. and because yeah. of that. At, again, there's other classifications, and I, I want to say that, you know, maybe I'm throwing on a conspiracy hat here or whatever. Well, you got a hat on. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, you know. <laughs> Let me get the tinfoil. <laughs> <laughs> but I wonder if this is kind of like a an issue with Brexit, because, mm. you know, you had, uh, you know, Denmark and Holland and all that, that they were part of the EU, you know, UK was kind of part of the EU. So they had, you know, friendly open borders. And now that with Brexit, is it possible that because the borders are confused and muddled that now they're going into regulations that they probably should have in the past and, you know, are just kind of going in on it now? Look, it's hard to say, but yeah, it's just, it, like I said, this is just such a, yeah, your arc is unseaworthy. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Yeah. But did any, any of you all actually watch the video? Oh, I, I, see, I that's did. the thing. The video that's attached, so uh, this is, I pulled up the um, the Fox News um, uh, article, and it started to autoplay a, an uh, another article. So I was thinking, oh, this is somebody that's going to just read this to me. 
Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> they were promoting another frigging, uh, maybe the arch is true, article on this article. Yeah, they oh, did. It's just it's so slimy. And yeah. the engineer um, that they had was, I watched the entire video because ooh, ooh, I ooh, thought ooh. it was hilarious. Oh, oh, oh. Let me, let me, let me just say, let me just say. Okay. Okay. So on the video, y'all. Okay, the video of the host was speaking on new evidence. And I kept asking myself, new evidence? What new evidence that, you know, knows art could be real, right? So the engineer is named Philip Williams. And follow up with, and when they were asked, like, you know, what is the evidence that you received and, and things of that nature? He uh, he said, uh. I wasn't like, here to accept <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. He's like, well, I wasn't here. I wasn't here to like to to, to actually, you know, it's not my job to, 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 to determine if this really is Noah's Ark. And and so I had to insert my what you talking about, Willis? You know, because uh, <laughs> like my whole thing is like, well, then why the hell are you here? And then the other dude, like the Dr. Norma Geyser person, like, you know, he made the claim that the structure was about 4,800 years old, which is about like in the time that, you know, for the biblical reference. And, and even in my cursor research, I found no hard evidence that such a flood or tsunami or anything that like to could flood the entire world even occurred at this particular point. Oh, my, my favorite thing about that is actually the physics of it. When you actually do the math, uh, don't don't ask me to give you the math. I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. Um, Leave the math. Don't miss. But if you but actually do the math, you figure out, okay, how much water is required to cover the entire earth? Mm-hmm. All right. Never mind where did it come from, where did it go? <laughs> Where'd you go from Cotton Eye Joe? <laughs> it came um, from but, underground uh, and it went to the firmament. Uh, but yeah. ne- never mind <laughs> never mind the origin or where it went. But just that volume of water required to cover the entire earth over the 40-day period where it would have had to rain down, the mm-hmm. friction of the rain would generate so much heat that our planet would still be today if using their timeline would still be a ball of molten <laughs> lava. It would not it would not be a planet. It would just be a mass of molten st- uh, elements. <laughs> it it would have been it would have been Kronos. Is that right? Which, which was one of the Greek gods that was like, you know, kind of like mountainous oh. and kind of lava, lava-like. And wasn't it Kronos? Uh, Am I right? No. I don't know. Cynthia, I'm sorry. When you said Kronos, Kronos I thought it was Kronos, like uh, the Klingon home world, since you, know, oh, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah, and yeah, I yeah, are yeah. Trekkies yeah, here. That's so. that part. That part. I'm yeah, sorry. That's where that's that's my thing. mind went. <laughs> but no, Kronos actually had like, you know, structures and, and beans on it, humanoids that was on it. I mean, yeah. So I was mm. thinking about the Greek god itself. So that was, you know, never mind. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> oh my goodness, Jason. I'm gonna have I'm sorry, you. I'm sorry. It's it's all good. Go ahead and just wrap 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 us up on this one because this one is woo. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Oh uh, yeah, no, so like I said, this is this is just you know. I don't want the anybody think like this is a victory lap story or not. It's not. It's not anything like you know. Oh, your story is so. No, no, no. This is just a, a, a like I said. It's a silly little story. Something to, to laugh at. You know, if you had only put in a few sprinklers, a couple of floating devices, and paint the side of the boat or the barge. I'm sorry, the barge. Mm-hmm. You'd have been fine. You you, mm-hmm. you wouldn't rack yeah. these things up and and you know. You're already being anachronistic in that it's half the size of the supposed true one. Just make the changes, dude. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what, what's the point of reporting on this thing? Because when you really think about it, okay, somebody brought a big giant box over to here and didn't pay attention to the regulations before they showed up, and they're not willing to do that minor bit of work to, to get it uh, fixed so they can tow it out of there again. Mm-hmm. And, you know, which, you know, that's that's what it really is. And here we are having a news report going, come on, guys, give them a break because it's the ark. It's the ark. Come on. <laughs> that's the thing. Special pleading right there. It's like, <laughs> yeah, because, this is, because this is a religious thing, it deserves special treatment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if this and, was anything that's what else. That's I like. I, Go ahead. Yeah, if this was anything else, if this was any kind of floating museum, like, you know, 
Google had this little massive box in the middle of, I think it was San Francisco Bay about 10 years ago or whatever. This would have, this would have been a non-story, mm -hmm. but because of what it is, it has been featured internationally. It has been, you know, talked about by people like us and we get to laugh about it. So <laughs> at the end of the day, I'm cool with it. <laughs> Hey, I, on the bright side, I'd say this this museum has uh, ha, has won up the Ken Ham Museum in that it's an actual boat. <laughs> it does, yeah. It <laughs> floats. It actually goes on the water. <laughs> so you got to give him props for that. Get on his level, Ham. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Right, get it, uh, get it together, get it together. Soon to be sub sea level. <laughs> I, am, I am happy that the Maritime Coast Guard Association is insisting that quote the Ark will remain detained until all the deficiencies have been put right, and that the um. And that they uh, the surveyor is invited back and it's checked for corrections yep. and so they're mm -hmm. not even going to take yep. your word for it. You mm -hmm. gonna have, <laughs> the unsuspected floating object must meet minimum criteria. <laughs> yes. Nah, you know what? <laughs> so, yeah. You Don't know what they mean, really? Uh, you know what they me. really should do? Especially with all these fines that are coming up for it, they should just turn and tell like the authorities that are finding them like, why are you finding us? Jesus paid it all. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, I'm not. I would not be surprised if they've already made All that argument. Sins. Jesus died for our fines. Oh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I love it. I'm fine with that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, you know, guys, this has been great. We, um, you know, we are finally coming to the end of our broadcast. See, I'm, I'm fulfilling my contract. Uh, ACA, I'm fulfilling my contract. I, I I earned it. Yes, I did. Because, but okay. So if we if we just want to just kind of just like wrap things up, you know. So this week we talked about you know the current backlash of you know critical race theory and how it states that we um and how states are specifically trying to ban it and in, instead of actually you know being uh you know committed to telling the truth. We're just gonna whitewatch history. Um, it also seems like the Southern Baptist Church um, losing members, including some of the darlings of the Moors, no relation. And, uh, you know, silly apologetics uh, continue in the state of Ohio, you know, by saying, you know, some 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 crazy shit uh where doctors you know are making well doctor specifically uh is making unsubstantiated claims concerning the COVID-19 vaccines and you know it seems quite perilous in Ipswich right now when it comes to the replica of Noro's art you know and again I, I'm telling them you know tell them that Jesus paid it all and, and see how that works out for you so uh, you know let's give our final thoughts you know I'm gonna go uh, from in and out, Jason. What are some of your final thoughts on this week's topics? Well, I, you know, thank you for having me on the show. I, I I know that my schedule is just oh so busy, and you know, and I, I just like I said, I want to say thank you. It was a lot of fun. Uh, interesting being on this side of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it is, Phoenix. What you got for us? Oh, first off, I don't. Uh... I don't appear on that much, so I'm glad to work with you again, Malty. Jason, glad to see you on this side of things for uh, the camera for a change. Good working with you for the first time. Uh, so, yeah, so this is, it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. But as for the topics we've touched, I mean, it, it's amazing how much misinformation is being used right now to twist, uh, the, twist the narratives around to serve political ends or just simply that people have bought into the misinformation to the point where they're trying to employ that, continue that misinformation and destroy the very things that they actually think they're trying to protect. Indeed. And we're going to uh, give uh, give Malti the, the last word here. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, I suggest everyone look at something that Phoenix had um, dug up with the disinformation dozen um, to actually look at who these people are that are putting out um, this 
vaccine disinformation, you might see some names that would surprise you. And so keep in mind, um, people, to um, check your sources. Thank you very much. That's right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Check your sources, people. And on that note, thank you guys for tuning in to yet another episode of the nonprofits. Uh, You're not going to get magnetized if you get the vaccine. And on that, we say bye bye. Bye bye. (laughs) Ha, 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 ha.